Welcome to Wilderness State Park. With over 10,000 acres and 16 miles of trails and 26 miles of shoreline, Wilderness State Park lives up to its name. Yeah, and when it comes to wilderness, there is a huge amount of diversity here from the shoreline to the woods. We just did a short hike in on the Nebo Trail, which is really kind of a two track, at least in this section, because we think it leads to a cabin. Um, and then off of that is the old Hemlock Loop. It's about a half a mile, a little over half a mile loop into Hemlock Old Growth Forest. And there's some really neat old big trees in there. This was a big tree. Wow. When they said old growth, they weren't kidding. No. Oh, poor tree. Wow, look at it. It's a great hike. If you don't mind giving a gallon of blood, not to the Red Cross, unfortunately, but to the mosquitoes and the black flies. So, you know, wear appropriate clothing, pants, long sleeves, bug spray, hat, hiking boots, because there also is poison ivy. As the brochure said, there's a lot of nature here, but a lot of that nature is out to get you. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I don't think that's how they put it in the brochure. <laughs> you have to read between the lines, Wait, but that's essentially what it on. means. Is... I'm going to read it to you. It says, and I quote, you should know that some elements of the natural environment are unpredictable and may be unpleasant. So apparently it's out to get you. And the mosquitoes are out to get us today. It's a bumper crop right now for mosquitoes. So, it, you know, in Northern Michigan, you deal with bugs. It's just something you have to deal with depending on the season. But there's a lot of, um, this state park really has a lot of diversity when I look at it in terms of the shoreline and the lake and the woods. So there's a lot of variety in the trails. There's hiking and biking trails and different things that you can see. Um, there's a coastal trail that we we hiked a mm -hmm. real small part of to go out and see the water and the beach that used to be, <laughs> that kind of thing. Apparently the trail is kind of wet. You said there's a trail here? Uh, yeah, it's right here. Don't you see it? I mean, I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. You want to go through there? It's a bit of a water. I mean, bit of a water trail. It's right now. Good triathlon training. When there's a will, there's a way. Especially when you're with Jessie. A few things stand in her way when she decides she wants to go for a hike on a trail. Found a couple interesting rocks just here, pawing through. They've got, I don't really know anything about rocks, but I do know that these are, looks like some kind of old coral fossil from a long ago when the glaciers receded. And just lots of really interesting things to find along here. Michigan's got a really interesting geologic history because of those glaciers, and you just never know what you're gonna find. Once you're in Wilderness State Park, if you head out all the way to the west end of the park, down this long dirt road past all the rustic cabins you'll come to a parking lot and once you get out you can walk right out to the beach and you have a gorgeous view of the Mackinac Bridge and the Straits of Mackinac. There is a quite nice sandy-ish beach uh, right now due to high water table there is quite a bit of water between the parking lot and the beach itself so you might have to do a little bit of waiting to get out there but it's not very deep and it's, it's warm so just take your shoes off, go right on out to the beach, take a look. One thing I should note here is most of the time when we talk about Lake Michigan, it's white sandy beaches. And we talk about Lake Huron, it's mostly stone beaches. But as we've seen, they do flip flop. And in this particular case, this beach has a lot of stones on it. 
You're not supposed to take and collect the stones, but I do encourage you to look through them because there's a lot of pretty colors, fossils, smooth stones. You might find a Petoskey stone once in a while, but that's probably hit or miss. But this is just a really nice place, so come on out to the end. Once you're out here, you can walk about three miles down the coastline to Wagashonts, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly and I'm probably butchering it. Uh, but basically you can walk three miles out to the end of the park, to the end of the very tip of here over here in Michigan. Uh, there are a couple islands further out that are also considered part of the state park that I don't think you can get to, but they are part of the state property. And so if you wanna go for a nice six mile round trip hike down the beach, it might be something kind of cool to do if you've got the time and the weather is decent. It's just a really nice place. It's, it is, like we said, it lives up to its name. It is the wilderness. So there are wild creatures roaming around that you have to be prepared for. Right now they've got a bear sighting and the bear has been wandering through the campground. So it's one of those where you put away your food, you don't leave trash out, you just be aware of your surroundings. There are bald eagle in the area. There was a juvenile nesting in one of the trees right by the day use area. And then you're going to see the regular little critters, the bunnies, the deer, the chipmunks, all of those kind of things. So this is one where you're away from everything. It is also a dark sky preserve. And because it is so remote from everything, on a clear night, you're going to see the Milky Way. You're going to see constellations, a good place probably to come early August for the Perside meteor shower. Love to come back here for that sometime. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. The dark sky preserve area is also actually the day use area. So, and I think it's because when you're in the day use area, you have a really nice view of the lake mm -hmm. and the shoreline. I mean, it's really pretty out there. And at night when it's dark, you might get to see a lot of stars. So it's just right. funny that the day use and the night use are in the, <laughs> the same, same spot. Thing. Well, you you have a great horizon. So it's a good place to see the sunset as well. You're, you've got the view of the Mackinac Bridge. So yeah, from a from a dark sky night perspective, that horizon is gonna be terrific. The diversity of this park spills over to the campgrounds as well. Um, when we were out here today, we drove through a few of them and they have everything from tent only to full hookup with water, sewer, electric, so, and everything in between. So along with the trails come a lot of camping options. So there's close to 300 sites, units, whatever you wanna call them between the modern campground, there's two modern campgrounds actually, one up by the beach, one in the woods. You've got a full hookup section. You've got six rustic cabins, three rustic bunk houses, some tent and walk-in only sites. You can't complain about your lack of options in this park. There's a lot to do. Uh, so, so no complaints here at all. Yeah, it really it depends on what you wanna do. A number of the sites were really good size. Um, some of them were smaller. I mean, it just really depends on what you have, what you're interested in doing while you're camping and finding the site, finding one that's open might be more of an issue at certain times of the yeah. year. This is a very popular part in this area. It looked like almost all of the regular sites were full. There was nobody in the tent only. So if you've got a tent, this is the place of to be apparently because there's nobody in that section at all. Yeah, that's true. Not as many people tenting anymore, I guess, <laughs> but they do have that option available. When you're staying here, not only do you have the thousands of acres of wilderness, but you're actually really close to Mackinac City. It's what, maybe 15 miles at the most. So you can see the Mackinac Bridge. You can hop on over to Mackinac City and grab some fudge and, and go shopping. You could even pop over to Mackinac Island for the day if you wanted to. Uh, I think there's just, there's actually quite a bit to do in this area. There's another big dark sky preserve just up the road from here, as well as McGulpin Lighthouse, which is a really cool lighthouse if you want to go check that out. And so I think this is a place where you could spend a long weekend, a week, hike the trails, do the Mackinac stuff and have a really good time here. Yeah, I mean, and whether you are interested in spending some time in a little more touristy city with the fudge and, <laughs> and all the fun that comes with that, or if you just want to go hike into thousands of pristine, undeveloped land, Wilderness State Park is the place to make your base camp. So whether you decide to go for the city or go for the wilderness, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.